So if you don't protect the people in your organization, if you don't care for them, your organization will never be an exceptional organization. They are the foundation of any organization. I met Lisa when she was chairing a committee for the Food Processors Association that dealt with occupational health and safety. The industry is having a lot of problems. It had the highest injury rate of all the subsectors. I had every opportunity to make a difference in that, in the industry, for a positive result. Bringing workers home to their, their families is meaningful. So we met. And after about three years, we uh, convinced Lisa and the, and the industry that the only uh, way to combat the significant injury rate, especially the serious injury rate in manufacturing, was to form an independent health and safety um, association that the employers would support and would be part of, quite frankly. She wanted to move safety from compliance to culture, from filling in forms, from meeting regulations, to it's inside of us. It's what we do because we want to be safe, we want to be secure, we want a healthy, we want a productive workspace. And that change from, from compliance to culture was the, was the big thing that had to be sold. On May 31st, 2007, you know, that was the date, I had enough signatures to be able to support a health and safety association. I remember that day because it was, it was a very important day. The, uh, the, the people that Lisa was working with, they were on board, they knew what they had to do, but they didn't have the support of a, above to be able to bring safety in as part of the culture. And, and so, so she went, well, who does that? Oh, those CEOs do that. I'm going after them. But her heart really was in making sure that we made British Columbia a safer place for everyone to work. And her belief is that we needed to start with leadership and the leaders of the organizations are, were the place to start. I would say when Lisa initiated the BC Safety Charter was definitely a pinnacle year where Lisa expanded her vision beyond just the manufacturing and food manufacturing associations to say we need to engage the CEOs and the leaders of organizations in British Columbia to embrace safety and to sign up and be committed to safety. That was I think a big turning point for the organization and it was a big turning point to be able to realize a larger vision for her. Fiosa started doing actual peer-reviewed research in partnership with a couple of universities, UBC and the University of Lethbridge. They are able to show that the companies with which the Manufacturing Sa Safety Alliance works have a decline in their injury rate. And that's indisputable now. Fiosa Mielsa was a story that we would talk about every time we introduced who we are. People thought it was a dance or a food or, and it really became and consumed five minutes of every presentation that we made. So we knew we needed to change it, but the, but the organization wasn't ready for that until we came together and recognized that bringing the manufacturing sector on board, the subsector of food industry was an advantage. It allowed us to provide more resources to everyone without additional costs. Over a relatively short period of time, she's gone from nothing to, to building a pretty significant organization. Um, and and she's, she's having a real impact. And that is, but it's that, it's that drive that she has that you see, it's a very rare thing to see. And sometimes she annoys people with her drive, but that's, you know, but people who have a drive and a vision and want to move stuff forward and are impatient to get it done, uh, make things happen. And that's what Lisa's doing. And the idea is to try to get employers to that point to understand that not only is it the right thing to do, but if you do the right thing, you can also save money and have a happier workforce and therefore a more productive workforce. We have seen uh, numbers uh, of injuries driven down to, to significant lows. Um, I see this as a, as a huge success story for us, and obviously I believe that the Alliance has been doing this for, for other organizations all across the province, and I would expect that you should see similar results.
The Manufacturers Safety Alliance, um, as a BC group, I think is too small for Lisa. I see it morphing into or growing into a, a national organization and really closely followed behind that would be some sort of international organization. Now I started out with seeing an injury rate of having over seven out of every hundred people being injured in the food industry. It is now reduced to under four, you know, 3.8 out of every hundred. So we're looking forward to many opportunities over the horizon as we launch our next decade to help support the expansion to beyond the 20% we currently serve in the manufacturing sector, to be able to have all of the manufacturing as our members who don't currently have a health and safety association. So our goal is to get into the hearts and minds of every leader to embody health and safety as a core value in their business within our province, perhaps within our country, and then connecting outside of our country to leadership around the world so that we can truly work together towards our overall goal, which is protecting people.